Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Hagen. Welcome to the first of a series of videos discussing universal design and cartography brought to you by the Nature Conservancy's Land Fire team. In this first video, I'll give you a quick introduction to universal design and then show you a few tools that will help you make more accessible maps. Let's get started. Universal design is a commonly used term in web development and in education, but it's less frequently applied to the art of cartography, even though it's not only a best practice, but in some cases required by law. Section 508 of the United States Rehabilitation Act mandates that any information and communications technology created by the U.S. federal government, including with government funds, must be accessible to all people, regardless of whether they work for the federal government. This doesn't simply mean providing captions for videos or creating alt text for images on government websites. It also means creating maps and other data visualization products that everyone can use. So what is universal design? Universal design is a concept in which products and environments are designed to be usable by all people to the greatest extent possible without the need for adaptation or specialized design. Sounds great, right? Who wouldn't want as many people as possible to use the amazing maps we're all creating? Unfortunately, universal design isn't as widely considered as it ought to be, mostly because cartographers aren't taught about universal design principles and don't know how to build them into their workflows. Thankfully, there are many tools that can help us with this work. I'll go over a few basic universal design considerations and then show you some tools to make it easier to implement these principles in your work. Check how your map looks in all color vision scenarios. One of the most important things we can do to increase usability and accessibility of our maps is to be very mindful of color choices. It's important to remember that a significant portion of the population experiences non-standard color vision and the way they see your map may not be the way you intended them to see it. In addition, users may print maps in grayscale, so maps need to make sense not just in color, but also in black and white. Esri, in their ArcGIS Online platform, has implemented an entire section of what they call colorblind friendly color ramps, which will increase readability for all color vision scenarios. You can access these through the layer style options in the new ArcGIS Online web viewer. Best practices here include avoiding color schemes that include both red and green and similar related tones, unless you add additional ways to differentiate classes, such as pattern, or unless you change the saturation and value levels to be sufficiently different from one another. We'll go over this more in future videos, but for now, I want to highlight some tools that will allow you to easily check the readability of your color schemes across a variety of color vision scenarios. The first is Coblis, the color blindness simulator. This tool allows you to upload an image, then select one of nine different color vision scenarios to see how the image changes under each. Are you able to distinguish the colors in this map under the following scenarios? How about this one? Another tool I highly recommend is Color Oracle. Simply install this free tool onto your computer and easily check how whatever is displayed on your screen looks under any of five different color vision scenarios. You just right-click, select the scenario you want, and the screen changes to approximate how things look under that scenario. I highly recommend this tool for GIS and mapping, as it allows you to check your maps without having to repeatedly export image files to check in Coblis. Finally, QGIS has a built-in color vision preview tool that allows you to see how your map will look under common color vision scenarios. To do this, select from the menu, View, Preview Mode. Select the preview mode you want to simulate, and the map pane will instantly change the color modes. There are five different simulation modes. Monochrome, grayscale, protonopia, deuteranopia, and tritonopia. Check the readability of your fonts. Legibility is the ease with which a user can not only read the text, but also understand it. This is generally the most overlooked part of the user experience, but it's very important. If your font is not readable, users cannot understand things like map legends, labels, titles, and any descriptive text that might go with your map. Good font readability benefits not only users with low vision, but also those with dyslexia, as well as those using lower resolution screens, smaller screens, or who might be accessing your content in bright sunlight 
or in situations where screens are not steady or stable. Font readability includes things like actual choice of font, font size, and the spacing between rows and letters. In cartography, we also need to consider visual hierarchy. Different font weights and sizes to emphasize the most important features and differentiate levels of content, as well as color contrast. Let's first look at font choice. Which of these fonts is the easiest for you to read and understand? Our brains generally prefer symmetry, harmony, and balance in all things, including letters. If a font has off-weighting, or the shapes of the letters have no consistency or balance, or the letters together do not create a harmonic impression, we will feel something as off. Consider creating your maps with several different font styles and evaluate which of them is easiest to read quickly. Here are a few tips to consider when selecting a font. Use simple, familiar, and easily parsed fonts. Avoid complex fonts, such as handwriting fonts or fonts with additional strokes that are unnecessary to the main letter form. Avoid character ambiguity. When characters within a typeface appear similar to one another, this can introduce ambiguity, which must be processed by the brain, thus impacting reading speed and understanding. Use a limited number of typefaces, fonts, and font variations. Next, let's examine font size and spacing. Here, there are some more established best practices, courtesy of the web development community. Some of these are less applicable to things like map labels, which often require smaller sizes than recommended, but we can still use the guidelines. Guidelines currently suggest a minimum of 14 to 16 points for body text and 12 to 14 points for secondary text, keeping at least a two-point difference between the two. In cartography, legend fonts should not be set smaller than 12 points and should be closer to 14 points as legend complexity increases. To illustrate this, here's a simple map legend rendered in 11 point, 12 point, and 14 point font. Which is easier for you to read? To further increase readability, we can add visual hierarchy between headers and class descriptions to better communicate information. We will now briefly touch on font spacing. In general, the smaller your font size, the larger you should set the spacing both between letters and between rows, as this will increase font readability at smaller scales. To illustrate this, take a look once again at our legend. Even at a 12-point scale, if our letter spacing, called kerning, is too tight, the font is still difficult to read. If we increase the kerning using the tools in the ArcGIS Pro legend properties, we can make this legend easier to read, even at a smaller font size. There are no convenient tools to check font size legibility, so I recommend looking at your map labels, legends, and other text on a variety of screens at a variety of sizes to determine the ease of reading that text. Check color contrast. It's important that your font colors are easily distinguished from your background colors. In cartography, this is most commonly applied to font labels, especially over categorical maps but I encourage you to check the contrast between font and background in all areas of your maps. One good tool for this is the WebAIM Color Contrast Checker. This tool allows you to input hexadecimal codes for your background color and your font color, then provides a contrast ratio score. From here, you can use the sliders to adjust the lightness of either background color or font color to explore how the contrast ratio changes and apply a more readable contrast ratio to your maps. Universal design and website accessibility guidelines require a contrast ratio of at least 4.5 to 1 for normal text and 3 to 1 for large text, with a recommended contrast ratio of at least 7 to 1 for normal text and 4.5 to 1 for large text. I encourage you to visit the websites displayed on the screen and link below in the information bar to explore further and gain a wealth of knowledge about universal design, user experience, and web accessibility. This video is only scratching the surface of all the things we as designers can do to increase the usability and accessibility of our maps. In the rest of this series, we'll be diving deeper into some specific ways to increase accessibility in our maps looking at how to make a color scheme more accessible, and examining convenient tools baked into the ArcGIS Pro interface that help with font readability. We hope you've enjoyed this introductory video and are looking forward to seeing you for the next one, making color ramps universally accessible. Stay tuned, and we'll see you then.